Hey, what's going on, everybody? Ryan here with... Mike. And this is number, I almost said episode there, 21 of the Stalker Effect. I almost said that wrong, too. I can't talk today. It's been one of those losing your your talking ability days, I guess, you know? Yeah, I know what you're saying. So, Mike, yeah, we got... <laughs> we. My dad bought a TV for the living room. Nice. How big is it? It's a, it's a four... I think it's a... No. No, I think the one in the basement's bigger. I, the one wow. he got, forgot upstairs, I think, was he said it was 42. It fits perfectly inside, you know, the big hutch we have in there. Yeah. He says you pull out the doors for in there, and you, it just fits It fits right in there, he said. Oh, so that's cool. I'm honestly just really surprised that we got any of, like, anything like that. Like, Well, you know, blah. you're finally coming to the 21st century. Shut up, Mike. Not all of us are as cool as you when you're fancy house and your fancy cars and your rich man clubs and pubs well you know you spent your money on a really nice kitchen and house and stuff like that and we spent our money on tvs yep <laughs> nothing else just tvs yeah just tvs there you go but um what is there something hey so with the parties in the next couple of weeks did you think about that at all yeah i i'm going to try and like go to all of them see if i could okay but i don't know i was all right so if i were to go to all of them i'd have to come over like the 27th and then spend the night right yeah if you yeah probably and then we'll go to the the land party gaming night the 28th no you'd you'd come over the 28th okay come over the 28th got it yeah all right so come over the 28th go to the land gaming night party thing mm-hmm. 29th nothing right yeah 29th is just a sunday uh monday the 30th is like your party thing right yeah yep 31st is you know new year's eve mm-hmm. and then the first new year's day yeah okay so, if I were to come over, I'm, I don't know, I'd, I'd probably come over the 28th. I don't know if I'd go home the 29th. I don't know if it'd be worth it, though. Yeah, I mean, like, like that's what I'm like saying. Ass. Yeah, and, like, if you wanted to go home that Sunday, like, in the morning, you could then come back, like, Monday afternoon or something if you wanted to. But, yeah. like I said, you don't have to. I'm going to work that day. But, okay. like I said, I work from usually, like, eight or nine to like three or four so it's not and like i don't think you'll have a problem just chilling here and you could just i mean if you're staying from saturday you'll have your computer and my computer and there's plenty of stuff to do around here like i think you'll be fine Uh uh-huh so and then the monday is that party and then tuesday is the other party so party 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 i mean it all kind of lines up right in a row so that was that that was that that kind of worked out i guess in a favor but that's just yeah. what's going on with that, and I wanted to know too if you were because if you were gonna be here those days, I was gonna go in and make sure I don't, I they can't schedule me for Monday and Tuesday. Of that week, so right. I can be here the whole day. Cause like it's weird. Um, yeah. next week, I think yeah, next week it like bypasses the availability thing and it schedules me to work during the day somehow, even though I'm not like it shouldn't be able to. It still schedules me during the day somehow. And it's really, it's weird. I don't know how it does it, but it does. That's weird. So, I just wanted to, I just I just don't know what's going on quite quite so with that, but um, that's just, yeah, so. If you just want to do that, that's cool. I really don't care. My my mom didn't care, so. Just whatever is down with you. Five days at Ryan's house? Yeah, sure, why not, right? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I'll, I'll think about it. I'll ponder it and talk to my parents. All right. Call in to work. Make sure I can get those days off. Okay. I mean, if anything, just it'd be cool if you if you went to the, if you still went to the gaming thing and then cuz that'd be fun and then at least and then maybe like the New Year's party like if if you didn't want to stay the days or whatever, you know. Yeah. But like it just is something. But um yeah, that's going on there. Uh what else? I don't think yeah, I just wanted to make I just wanted to ask talk to you about that really quick again and just see what was going on with that. Yeah. Uh huh. But I think I'm I'm honestly just gonna get those um get those off anyway. 
Yeah. Because I really don't want to work those two days during the day. <laughs> if, if, especially, too, if I'm doing something at night, I really don't want to do it anyway. So um, I think I'll just shoot for that myself. We'll see what happens. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, that should be fun if I can come to those. Yeah, you should be able to. Like, I don't yeah. see... I don't see why not. I mean, it's just whether or not you want to stay the whole days or if you want to go home or whatnot. I think that's like the, that's the biggest, the biggest thing yeah. with all, with all of it is whether or not you want to stay, go home or this or that. So. Yeah. And then, uh, for the one, the 30th, who's, mm-hmm. who is that? That'd be like your friends, you know, from high kind school. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. I think okay. I have an, I, I, I know for sure, for sure. Corey's going to come, JJ will be here, and then I think JJ's going to bring Robin, Courtney's probably going to, I think Courtney's coming, and then from there I'm going to ask a couple other people. Okay, cool. So, it, not a lot of people, but, you know, just people that are cool. They're, everyone's just in gen, you know, cool. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay. I mean. Oh, man. All right. So, what's been going on recently with you? I mean, we got a TV today. That kind of was shocking. Well, that was um, today. Yeah, but I went upstairs. My dad just got home, and there was a TV sitting there. I'm like, oh. <laughs> I, no, I was like, I, I was like, did you, did you buy another TV, Dad? Is that or is that just the box from the old one? And he's like, yeah, I bought another TV. Who else would it be for? I'm like, oh, okay. Just out of the blue, buy another television. Yeah. And I wonder, I wonder if there was a deal on it too, because like there, I think the last time he got a deal, I don't even know, like. Well, didn't you get it on Black Friday? Yeah, you got it on Black Friday, the last yeah. one. So, like, I don't even, I don't know if you got a deal on this one, too, or, like, what's, you know, that's another thing that kind of, like, shocked me, I guess, was, like, how well, did you... Maybe he realized it was worth that much. So. I think so. He really likes, he's, like, I told, I told you how stunned he was by the quality yeah. of the picture and everything, and it wasn't even, like, the it wasn't even watching Blu-ray, it's just regular, standard yeah. things, and it was, like, oh, my God, so... <laughs> So now we got. So now basically the the TV in the basement, it's basically mine. Like, with nice. another one upstairs. Like, who's gonna come downstairs and watch TV? That's true. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's you think about it that way, and it's like ah, another. T-, you know, so that's kind of that's pretty cool. But I mean, honestly, it's just uh, you know, spring uh, winter break starts next week. Yeah, it's gonna be good. Finally, I mean, yeah, week All and a half days off, off of school. Yeah. Get out of there for a little bit. School's just like, I'm like, I don't know if it's like, if it's school, but something's like kind of dragging. It's just like, I just want to be done. I told you how I really don't have any classes this try. Like, yeah, at all. Like, I mean, physics doesn't even count as a class. It's just that, it's just like that easy. It's not even like a hard class. Yeah. Physics is just so easy. And then even in math, I'm doing like really well. And it's like, I I don't know how, because usually I don't go, I don't do good in these people's math classes and like it's pretty easy and it's like kind of weird uh-huh. but i don't know like it doesn't make sense like we just the first math test like all, all of our you know how like you have like said teachers to teach said subjects or something or just like for the different like math or like history and that you know and each teacher you kind of know what to expect either because you've had them before or yeah uh-huh you know and it's yeah. like I'm surprised that I've already done so well with the two with the first test and then the first quiz we had in my math class because of how I did last year in her class. It was like and this year if anything I've I studied and put forth way less effort than I did last year. Wow. Like I don't think it's the material that's easier. Um like I don't, you know, but I don't, I don't know, it's just weird. You think about it for like a minute it's like that that's like it just I don't know, it's just weird. Maybe Maybe uh, you're just better at school. I don't think that's I. I don't like to think that. Like I feel like that could be, you know, something. But like you, I don't know. You know me. I don't. I don't study outside of school. I don't do schoolwork this year. I have done zero schoolwork outside of school except written my journalism articles the night before they were due at like eleven o'clock at night. That's well, that's the only outside yeah. work I've done. See, you're getting better at school. You don't have to do the schoolwork to be good at school. It's just being good at school. You know how to, like, 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 you know how to, like, arrange your time where you never have to do homework at home, or you just, you don't have to study for the test, you... Because you make, you, like, learn the stuff the first time, yeah, or something like that. That's all I think. Because you're good at school. I don't know. Yeah. Like, some people, they might, they're not really, like, dumb, they just 
they get bad grades because they're not good at school. They're not good at tests or something like that. Yeah. You're just good at school. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't like tests. Like, I don't like to think. I never th- thought I was a good test taker. I guess I kind of am. I'm like, it's a test. It's not hard, but I mean, I don't like tests at all. Like, I think the idea of a test, like, in the whole education thing is, like, a test proves nothing. Like, yeah, it's not going out in the real world and applying what you've learned. That's, like, somehow that's how they have to, that's how they should test you because... The test doesn't mean anything if you can't actually apply what you've learned to a real life situation. Yeah, yeah I, I, I know what you're saying. Like, I mean, that's how I think about that. It's tests are mainly like a way of gauging how well the teacher taught it, not really. Yeah, how well you've learned it. Yeah, and it's like you fail a test, like oh well, you know, it's not like you're gonna go back and relearn the material or like actually get in until you've learned it or something. It's, yeah. It's like a broken system that, I don't know, we're not going to go into that because we talked about that. Broken system. It's just like yeah. the, it's well, like an underlining point when it comes to school. It's yeah, a I just system. I just want to bring up this one point that my principal said to us one time. He said, school is the only time in your life, or high school, really, is the only time in your life where uh, you take a test one time and you can't retake it and get better results. Because basically anything beyond that, if you screw it up like a test, type test wise, once mm-hmm. you can retake it. Yeah, in college you get like three tries. Yeah, to or, take a test, yeah. and most you know for most professors. So it's like I don't. It's just because the more in college, the more so they see that you have to be able to apply. It. You know, the test really is engaging. Yeah, kind of what you've learned, but more like what you've picked up or something. Uh-huh. I don't know. I just, I've, I, you know how it is. I, I just don't think education is as worth it as everyone thinks it is. I mean, sure, you need to know how to talk and write and do simple math, but that's simple math and simple writing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like most people really don't have a reading or speaking level beyond the eighth grade. <laughs> like, that's like, you know what I'm saying? Like that's, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like there's this one guy. Um. Uh, his last name is like Shof. He was this guy who inspired this one guy, and he gradu. He was like a really famous. He was like famous. He was very wealthy, but the thing about him and like the way he did everything is he never went to high school. He dropped out of high school, and like the last grade he made it through was the eighth grade. So everything like he did that like was passed on through like his writing and the questions and the questions he asked and like his philosophies and stuff, they were all written and said at like an eighth grade level. So like they were so simple that anyone could understand them. Yeah. Like, they just took something that someone who was older could have made more complicated and just put it, like, in the most basic way. But then, like, the question was really basic, but then you had to, like, answer it in a serious way at the same time. Did you know that newspapers have to write at a fifth grade reading level now? Yeah, yeah it was, I thought, yeah, like, fifth grade or sixth grade or fourth grade, somewhere yeah. around there. I think it's fifth grade. Because, it's... like, yeah, people, that's, like, the average age for reading and writing. Like, yeah. people don't really know or go much higher than that it's like oh wow you know it's, uh-huh. it's really crazy when you think about it because it, that's like the truth truth of the yeah it's i don't know it's uh it's something else but yeah broken school systems coming back yeah, to it okay. every single every single time you can't get away from it until you're out of college or high school yeah. I mean, after high school is the first chance you get to be away from thinking about education, and then you end up right back into the whole vicious cycle of it again. I've if you, always t- If you go that route. Yeah. I stressed to you before, like, how everyone always is always up to think, think on, like, what schools they're applying to and all that, and they, but they, they have no idea really what they're going to study. Yeah. And what, and what job they're going to get in that field, you know? Uh-huh. Like, it's not even about what you're going to study. It's about what job are you going to do the rest of your life or you're going to be able to find. Because, like, something I've been hearing a lot lately from, my pa- from, like, parents and adults is, like, all these people have these degrees from college of four or six years, but they can't find jobs. Yeah. All, you know what I'm saying? People, are, they're working minimum wage jobs because they can't find a job, you know, for, in the, for the degree or for what they went to school for. And... Yeah, I just... <laughs> Yeah, it's right there, like right there, underlying point. Like, what a, in a way, it's like what a waste of, of money and time if you're not gonna be able to get a job. Yeah, I, I mean, if they can't get one out of the, get go, it's not that bad. But if if they're like working that that minimum wage job for, a few years of their life, then it's 
then that's bad. Yeah, after yeah. So it's just it all depends what route you're gonna take, what you're gonna do. I talked about how like honestly the path I'm gonna take is open routes of alt- multiple things that could happen and be done. So it's hard to yeah. explain to people, but when you actually explain it, people do get it, which is. Uh huh. You know, everyone always just thinks like still people are so straight minded with the whole you got to go to college to get a job and to succeed. It's like you know it's just harder not to. Mm-hmm. It's just and that's not as straightforward. Yeah, you have to find different paths. You actually have to work for something. You know, you have to work harder for something. Yeah, harder. Yeah, like I don't know. I, I've taught. We've said like some people aren't cut out for college. And, like I couldn't go through school anymore. I'm just fed up with school, and I just you sometimes some people know that. If you went to go to college, you just wouldn't put forth your best effort and actually get the best grades you could because you just don't want to be there. Yeah. It's like going to high school every day and not wanting to be there. Somehow you're still getting by, but you just don't want to be there. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. I feel like that's why my whole high school experience has kind of been like, like a downhill kind of thing because it's like... Early on, like, I knew what I wanted to do with my life, you know, but as the years went on, I kind of got more straightforward and, like you started doing stuff and I was like once you kind of know where you want to be and you know that what you're doing is not getting you to where you want to be like you have no desire to even be there Uh uh-huh because you're just like kind of wasting your time or whatever yeah not really wasting your time like I've decided to manage my time better I'm actually like during the time where I just kind of like sit there and chill at school now I'm actually reading some of the books I got and actually making use of the time I have I'm not picking up per se some of the things from the books like I would if I wasn't worried about the whole school thing but I'm still at least reading it the first time and getting acquainted with the information and the ideas yeah that that sounds pretty good just I don't know I don't know if that's for me I don't don't think it is for me I just I don't think I could do it like not go not go to college that kind of thing yeah yeah, I, no, honestly, like you too. I couldn't, I couldn't see you not going to college. Like you're someone who's smart, who has a lot of potential when it comes to going to college, and then getting a a job that requires you to go to college. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's that's you. You know what I mean? That's me. Like when I think of you, I think of that being the path you were to take, or, because you're good at school and you don't mind actually learning what you want to learn in school. Well, yeah, I mean, kind of. You know guess, what I mean? I guess I can tolerate school more than. You per Most, se. Yeah, yeah, you you can't tell everyone. No one can really, no one looks at school the way I do and like just how pathetic it is. Yeah. Like I, when I go to school every day and I think I'm wasting my time being here. Like I could be doing something way more productive with my day than being here. It's just, it's not, it's not healthy or good, but it's, it just is what it is. So we'll just keep rolling with it. School's almost over. Less than, um, less than six months, I think, left in this game. Yeah. So. Yeah, less than six months. It's crazy, you know. This year's flying by. Your guys' first semester's up right after break, and then yeah, our second try ends in the end of February, I think, or maybe the end of January already. And you know, then it's then it's third try and second semester, third quarter, fourth quarter, and it's it's over already. It's crazy. Oh boy, yeah. Eileen comes back from college, uh, Wednesday, so. Well, that's nice. That's when her semester ends. Really? I mean, my um, my one buddy, he's back. His semester ended last week for college. Yeah, I know. It. I felt like it was really late this year. Yeah, I that's think, what I was. I'm... Like last year, I I swear she got home like the first week of December, not halfway through it. Yeah, so I'm like, yeah, that is weird. I don't even know. That is crazy. Maybe they started late this year. I don't know. Yeah, they might have. I don't know. So. It's all, all what you're gonna do and how you're gonna take it. Yeah, I gotta, gotta go through the, through the motions one way or another. Yep. I just think it's weird too, just how, how little everyone thinks about the options that, or the potential they can have in like doing multiple different things. You know. Like what? Like no one really sits there and thinks that they don't have to go to college or that they could do this or that or that they or actually like find like that one thing that they actually want to do with their life. You know what I mean? Like that. Yeah. You know, everyone has that. Everyone's supposed to have that one dream or that one goal where they want to be or that one job or that one dream that they want to have, right? So, like, you know, people talk about those kind of things, you know, and, like, how to get there, you know, like, motivational speakers and philosophers, you know, that kind of stuff. 
Uh-huh. And you think if more people would hear that kind of stuff about the way like society or the way the universe works and all these laws and um, uh, what's the what's not laws and philosophies or whatever and how they all work, that more people would actually go out there and do these things, you know? Yeah, I mean, yeah, that makes sense. But no one really th- sits down and thinks about it, you know. And I think honestly, I see a lot more of it now too. That whole growing up thing, people aren't really people don't want to really grow up anymore. They want to live the high school life forever but at the same time they don't want to work like me like i said the way i'm going to do it it's kind of living a high school life but you're working really hard at the same time you know yeah when you're in college you're not really living a high school life because you actually have to really really focus on college plus at the same time you're probably going to have a job to pay for college and all this other stuff you know Uh so it's far from that high school lifestyle or that young lifestyle that you're trying to have yeah and also it's uh like like uh it's just people they don't understand what's what's coming up ahead like i know that's one thing high school and college Mm -hmm. yeah like they think that you they talk about like they know it but when you look at them or you talk to them about it they don't feel comfortable talking about it like that's one thing i've really learned about people about how to tell what people really know things about and what are they're kind of in a way passionate about is when you bring up certain topics when it comes to like pertains to life, philosophy, ideas, thinking, and they drop it like a finger snap. Yeah, they just because, change the subject. Yeah, because they really know nothing about it. Like they think they do, but then when you try to actually talk about it because you know so much about it and actually have beliefs and opinions on it, they try to switch the subject because they really don't know. They really don't care either, you know? Yeah. And you see that a lot. Like more than you'd think when it comes to certain people. Yeah, I get. I guess I don't really bring that up with people, but. Yeah, I don't like that's like I I enjoy talking about that kind of stuff, but I don't really bring it up with anybody anymore. I just I just talk about it with certain people and more or less just to myself because no one wants to talk about that for some reason. Yeah. You know, I like to talk about it with people that are younger, so you can get younger people's opinions on it, not older people that kind of maybe enjoy talking about that more, but just because the viewpoints are different. You know, I, you're supposed. Go ahead. I I was just agreeing with you. I okay. was like talking to younger people. That sounds kind of interesting about like philosophy. Yeah, like what are your beliefs on philosophy? Like what books have you read, or where did you get your information about that? You know. Okay. Yeah. Or like, how young are you talking about? Just like our age, simple teenagers. Oh, okay. You know, sixteen, high school. Yeah. You know, sixteen through. You know, 18 or 19, you know, that's it, you know, just people our age. And most people aren't thinking about that kind of stuff. Yeah. Like, and when you read the books or listen to these people talk about those kind of things, right? The famous people that have, you know, do that stuff. It's like all of them at the end of the day say that the earlier you are when you learn this, the better off you're going to be. Because you're going to have these, be- not they're not really beliefs, but the ideas and the, the laws and the just the simple way things work. They're going to be embedded in your head and you're going to be already incorporating them in your day-to-day life for longer. So, yeah. you're going to be walking in that right direction even longer. Uh-huh. Yeah, Cause I, like, see. I see. Like, Sounds... what my dad said, you know, like, um, like the certain books that you have to read through, like, you're supposed to read, you know, there's always a whole bunch of books, like, on, like, philosophy or mental attitude or success or all that kind of stuff that everyone kind of knows about or everyone thinks you should read, you know? Yeah. But a lot of people don't find those books or pick up those seminars or, or hear about those speakers until they're, like, they're married right before they have kids, and they're kind of already on that path that they've chosen. Yeah. So it's very, very hard to alter that path to maybe do that one thing you do want to do or to even incorporate a lot of these things in your daily life because you already have things incorporated in your daily, into your daily life. Huh. Yeah. I, or something like that. I never really thought about that. Like that's what my dad said. Like, I had no idea. My dad has, like, all these books and, you know, um... Fuck, what are the things they had before DVDs? The little cassettes? Yeah, cassettes. Are they, are they just cassettes? Is that what they're yeah, called? cassettes. Okay, yeah. And he has all these different seminars on cassettes from when, like, 20 years ago already by now, when he was, like, 30, my mom and dad first got married and stuff. And, like, I learned that my dad used to get up before, like, they had kids and stuff. Every day, my dad would get up and read these books about these important books from, like, big authors like Napoleon Hill um, what's, what's that one's Napoleon Hill, Brian Tracy, Zig Ziglar, the one by, uh, Tony Robinson, um, you know, big authors on the whole life thing and success and all that kind of stuff. Um, 
Yeah. yeah just wow. really good books to read. And I learned my dad woke up every day and he used to read, read for an hour and then work out and do all this, these things that he doesn't even do anymore. Right. And then like so when I talked to him about what I want to do, he says, that's great that you want to do that because you have to, you know, it's better to learn, read those books now and have those ideas now so then you can actually go out there and do something with them instead of not really being able to do that. Yeah. Because well, like the circumstances don't allow for it. It's pretty cool that like you and your dad are like kind of similar. Like you guys both were into the philosophy thing and like that stuff. That it's pretty cool. Yeah, I think one thing I kind of learned about it all too, the whole these people is everyone at one point will question philosophy, their existence, their purpose of everything, you know? Yeah. But for honestly, like ninety five eighty percent I'll use the eighty twenty principle. For eighty percent of the people, they've already they're like figuring they're thinking this when they're in their 50s and 60s after they've already lived their life you know yeah they're wondering if they lived it the right way instead of like the other 20 that are wondering it before they've even lived it and making sure that they're actually living it the way they want to live it uh-huh. and doing it the whole way through not just little bits of it huh. you know just like waking up every day yeah. and doing exactly what you want to do when you want to do it yeah. Sure, there might be like those six hours where you're on the computer doing your investing or whatever, but or your four hours doing that, but that still leaves like sixteen or eighteen hours left in the day for you to do whatever you want to do, whatever you want to do. Yeah. Wow. I just so that's pretty cool. I, mean, I never thought about that stuff. You're always blowing my mind on these podcasts. I have nothing to say. I'm honestly surprised sometimes that you don't think about that stuff as much as as much as I do. Well, but I don't know. That's just kind of the stuff I've come to. Yeah, you 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 put a lot more time into it than I do. I just kind of kind of just like goes into my mind when I'm trying to fall asleep, and then yeah, you don't really like, you haven't really looked into it. Yeah, like that's something that I think is weird about me because I think before like probably two years ago, beginning of high school, sophomore year, and stuff, right? And even last year, yeah, last year for sure. I was going to bed thinking about those kind of things too, but I never looked into it. And then this year I kind of figured out that I really enjoy that kind of stuff, so I'm actually going to look into it uh-huh. and start writing stuff down, try and read books and listen to people talk about it that know what they're, that have done things and done these things. And it's yeah. very interesting to listen to them talk about it. Uh-huh. You know, like, yeah. um, Brian Tracy's a very good speaker. Yeah, and he's a very sm- he's a very good author too, and he, he you know, the stuff you know, what he's saying is is all like true. You got to go do that stuff. So yeah, I, maybe one of these days I'll look into that stuff a little bit. It's all about time too. Like that's another thing. Like you know how I say about like how when you read it over when you're trying to do school and just kind of live life when you're younger, you're not really actually taking in the ideas. Yeah, that's why it's important to kind of to write stuff down, mark the pages, and get the just a general idea of what's going on so you can read it again and actually pick it up you know but just yeah. like open your mind to it. like i honestly feel like i'm reading this one book right now and it's it's about um it's called the what's it called the magic of belief or believing or something like that but it's not really about believing but that's like the overlining idea it's more about just like the subconscious mind and all the book is is like little bits and details about belief the subconscious mind and just ideas about that but all of it is just examples of specific people in history and some people that you know um, and how they've used the power of believing or suggestion or the power of the subconscious mind to do these crazy things. And it's just literally examples of how these things work and everything. Huh. Yeah, that sounds pretty interesting. It's just, you know, and like I said, I'm reading it for the first time and I'm, you know, things are popping in my mind but I'm not like really I'm just more mind blown the first time reading it than I am or like in agreement with some of the things that I already know it's like yeah I've seen that before or oh my god that's crazy yeah so that's just it's just really cool and fun to do I guess when you come over I'll show you some of the books and I can show you the some stuff I'll show you the, some of the stuff oh boy reading so excited to, to read some some books Is that, I couldn't tell if that was sarcasm no, I was I was kidding. It was like you know, you know. Well, I was gonna just like show you the books, like the books that are out there. Yeah. 
I enjoy. I learned that I like. I like listening to the seminars from the people give. You know. Yeah, like the TED talks and. Yeah, it's like more combined thoughts, more specifics. But yeah. then it's also nice to read it in writing because then like you're seeing word for word the purpose and like it goes into more detail kind of. Yeah. Like both ways it's fine. Like I really don't I'm I'm cool with reading. I enjoy reading. Yeah. But just as long I only enjoy reading when I'm reading exactly what I want to read. Like if I don't want to read a book even though I'm halfway done with it, you're not gonna pick anything up from it or even want to finish reading it. Oh, so you just like you would just like set it down and not even finish it? I'd but, finish it eventually. Okay. But like usually if you if you actually enjoy the book for what it is, you're gonna finish it anyway. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's all I guess I don't know, just all in how you look at it or whatever. Uh huh. Yeah. Wow. One thing that um came up with did you 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 knew about um about Corey and Anna, right? We we talked about that. Yeah, a little bit. We had that spiel before. You knew what was going on with that? Yeah. Well, you know how Corey is with the way everything kind of goes with him. He kind of always gets screwed over in general when it comes to certain people. Oh, boy. Especially when it comes to, like, relationships. Yeah. You've seen that, honestly. Like, if you admit to the way the whole Riley thing and the Leah thing went, he was kind of left on at, out on the deep end, just kind of screwed over in a way. Yeah. Just with people in general. So, that happened again. Oh, boy. Um. So that the thing that he had is done. It's was wrapped up, done. So they're not dating anymore. No, like it. Wait, the, wait. So so did Riley screw them? No, no, not like that. I mean, just like in general, like the the people like kind of just kind of screwed Corey over, right? Yeah. But it was like a time thing, I guess, and the whole title thing, of course. Everyone I, always some people, but I, more or less the whole time thing. What was the title thing? Like just like you're dating, really, oh, okay. you know, that we, you know, yeah. But that ended on like the note and the notion of we're going to be friends and things can go back to the way they were, and when there was no way that was going to happen. Yeah. So. Oh boy. I don't know. It seems like for some people, the whole, the whole, uh, the whole time thing and the whole you can do better than this or that or, you know, I don't know. It just. Whenever stuff like that happens to Corey and, like, he gets to talking about certain things, it just, you know, every once in a while you kind of, I kind of feel like he, he slips away from kind of, like, life and reality. But then either something happens or just, you just know then when you talk about it for a little bit that, you know, he's, he's still in the right spot. Yeah. Because I always feel like he slips away from things, but really he's not. And he doesn't. He just doesn't, he's just one of those people that really are, like, two different people. You know what I mean? Like, I thought I was two different, like, people at certain times, but then you meet him and he's so different. Like it's just crazy. Uh huh. You when you put him in a room with certain people, how different he is, and it's crazy. Yeah. But, I mean, that happened with him, and that sucks. Just yeah, it's just you know, poor. Yeah, that, that man, poor Corey, always getting screwed. Yeah. One thing. Hey, here's. I don't know if I ever talked to you about this, but um, it came up. Well, I don't want to say yesterday. Probably, I was talking with 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 Ashley about um, kind of like just relationships in general, and we were funneling back to what we've talked about before, and it was just like how you know how with the age thing, people, you know, like look want pe- some people. The majority of people when they're younger, right, aren't really looking for a you could call it meaningful relationship or the stuff where you actually understand the the things that go into it or like the whole love thing, you know, right. And the meaning of it. And most people don't look for that or like something that would actually last and like have lasting and like nothing would change throughout it lasting because that's just how it works, you know? Yeah. Or that kind of thing. And when you're younger, people don't really look for that. So then when you run across someone who really wants that or is ready for that, it's so hard to find someone else who's in the same mindset and at the same time you can relate to. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Yeah. That is something I get I get to thinking about and kind of how in a way you could say I've lucked out and just how a lot of other people are just you see some people that actually want that kind of stuff. Because here's something kinda of weird that I, I guess kinda of, I this just came to me. Um 
this universal principle in the universe called the law of attraction, how um, it's kind of like likes like attracts like, basically. Yeah. Like, if you think something, you're going to attract people that think the same thing to you, vice versa. Uh-huh. So kind of in a way, if you think about it as a whole, where you're at, whether it be in school, work, people, you're... In a way, since you've been thinking some things so strongly, certain other people that are thinking these things are kind of like standing out to you. And you somehow, it's not that you like pick up on it, but somehow it just it just comes up somehow. And then before you know it, you're having these conversations and you're talking to these people, you're, you're meeting and becoming friends or buddies with these people because yeah. the principle, like, uh-huh. yeah, it's actually a real thing. And I just didn't even think about how that's probably how half these things come up is because simply that principle. I don't yeah, know, I, like... I mean, I guess most of the time you're pretty similar to your friends because, you know, you have to have something in common to yeah to become friends with them, so... Yeah, and then it's like, too, one thing that I've kind of thought that's weird. It's like, sometimes at the end of the day you think, really, you don't have much in common with, with some people, but then at the end of the day, too... There's always, there's still things you do have in common, but usually there's like one or two big important things or that just, that really you have in common with people, right? Yeah. Like for you or me or for me or Corey, like we, we're actually, we've known each other for a long time, you and me especially, you know, we've been through a lot and seen a lot and that helps a lot too, that helps tremendously. But at the end of the day, what, the reason why it's still able to talk about anything and just have conversations is because you share like, similar open-mindedness and, in, in, you know, just in beliefs and stuff. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Everyone nowadays, I feel like a lot of people nowadays are so closed-minded when it comes to things. They don't want to, like, read and read or just listen to other people and acquire different opinions or things about things. Things about things. Yeah, yeah sure, things yeah. about things. Hashtag things about things. Yeah. You could call it, you could do the hashtag, hashtag YOLO. So, hashtag er, Coney2014. Oh, man. (laughs) Where did... Hashtag 2013, dude. They didn't do it this year. It's very disappointing. Uh Oh, well, you know. Dude, they did um, another one of those YouTube rewinds, and this year sucked. Last year's was way better. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Did you see the new one? It just came out like like, this week, I think. And I saw it, and then last year's was way better. Like I I watched, and I was like, I don't remember anything from YouTube this year. Like, I guess the Harlem Shake was on there, and I was like, was the Harlem Shake this year? Was that 2012? Yeah, I guess it, I think it was. I guess it was. YouTube said it was. They described it as a 2013 occurrence, so. Like, I just didn't think. The internet wasn't. A, if you go by that YouTube video compared to last year's, the internet wasn't. The internet really wasn't too hot this year. It was a pretty dull year on the internet. Uh, rewind. Yeah, like, it was really weird. What does 2013 say? I don't know. It's just, what do you mean? Oh, no. It's just, is it YouTube Rewind, what, is, what does 2013 say? Let's see, it came out, uh, where does it say that now? December 11th? Yeah, like four days ago. Hmm. Yeah, that's probably the right one. I'll watch it but later. I just, but I just watched it, and I'm like, there was really nothing big this year. This was a pretty dull year. Like... Everything that was big was last year. I feel like I don't know yeah. what was with that. So I was just kind of that was just a kind of a different crazy thought to have or whatever. Yeah. Well, maybe we're just growing up and the internet isn't or like the things they do in this video aren't that fun to us. Yeah, they're really not that cool anymore. Ah, uh, jeez, that like makes me feel be, so old. I know, right? Like they used to be funnier. Like I used to be like the thing, and then now it's just like now it's just like just stop. You're embarrassing yourself, kid. Yeah, I really, I know it's weird to say that, but it's true at the same time, so. I don't know, dude. Yeah. I mean, <gasps> for YouTube, what, do you watch any YouTube videos anymore? Like, honestly? Honestly, I watch Inside Gaming in the Morning and ETC when I eat my breakfast. Other than that, occasionally I go back to some of the funny guys that I listen, that I watch, um, Every once in a while, maybe a podcast, Rooster Teeth video here and there. But the only thing I really watch anymore is, like, lately it's just been Inside Gaming and ETC. 
That's been it. Yeah, because have... that because that like relates more to news and just kind of stuff going on current events wise. Yeah. I really don't. Yeah, I really don't watch YouTube videos that much anymore. See, I watch. Uh, I watch the occasional Minecraft video. Mm-hmm. I don't really. Um, from here and here and then, when Blade when Blade puts up a good video, I'll watch him still. I usually watch uh, uh, some some of the Battlefield people like uh, Frankie on PC, mm -hmm. AP. I usually watch most of his videos, and then uh, then some some League of Legends videos. Uh huh. Like other than that, it's like nothing. Yeah, I know. Like it's not. You don't even really go on there and try to find the funny stuff, quote unquote, anymore. You know. It's just yeah. You just kind of look, you look for the interesting stuff. Yeah, like yeah, that's what I kind of look for it more. I look for more interesting, more ideas and stuff here and there. Sometimes the old people I listen to, but. Everything just kind of seems like it's dulled out. It's getting it's getting too repetitive or whatever. Yeah, or maybe like know. like some of the like let's plays now. I just mm -hmm. don't really have time for them. Yeah, or, or that's it too. You don't have time. You're not really interested in them. Interested in them anymore. Yeah. Oh, well, I guess I guess now I watch a lot of streams on Twitch. Uh huh. Yeah, that's that's what I do most of the time. Yeah. I don't. Really, I never really got into streaming. Um, uh, it'd be yeah. fun to try, but I never, never got into watching streaming and stuff. I don't know. Uh huh. Yeah. I mean, I I still I still enjoy listening to some of the podcasts when I have time, but I guess a lot of it comes down to time. And you know, lately I've been listening to those seminars about from these people and stuff. So that's like. Yeah, that that's been the YouTube here. kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And then when I think about it, just in general, I barely have any time to actually sit down and actually watch a YouTube video or play a video game or something because I'm usually always doing something I'm just like exhausted and I just want to like kind of sit and sleep or just ponder like a thought like yeah there's no time to even like do, there's just not enough time it's not, it's not that there's not enough time it's just that you're busy uh huh yeah because I can't say there's not enough time because there's always time I hate when people say that there's never enough time to do something because that's no I watched I don't know I watched but um this one guy um a while ago or whatever I heard, when he's talked about it was like a motivational thing or whatever but he said you have to think about you know days as in hours and as years in hours and go there's 24 hours in a day and most people sleep for like 10 to 12 hours you know when you're younger of course right what did i get like four, i get like six or five yeah four. but most people a lot of people when they're younger get like eight to 12 hours you know in that time range right all right. Eight to twelve, right? Sure. Yeah. That's a, that's half to a that's half to over a quarter of your day. You're you're wasting sleeping. You're wasting it. Whoa. S yes. Don't get me wrong. Sleep is necessary, but in a lot of honest and truth story, there's stories about this stuff. But in all reality, if you really are always doing stuff and being active and actually doing what you want to do, you could go days without sleep and you wouldn't even feel it. You know what I mean? No, that's not true. You can. True story. I don't think you could. Mm -hmm. Yes, you could. If you're doing something interesting. Well, kind of, I wouldn't say interesting, but like you as yourself are actually you just keep going. Like I know for a fact that if I once I get into something or a certain amount of things, I could keep going and I'd be fine. But I forget how to, I forget how to describe it. But just like you look at days and hours, right? So you waste that many of your time just, you know, sleeping, right? Yeah. Then you waste... Two hours for a lot of people talking on the phone with somebody or, or just doing nothing, watching television. And then you go to work for a set amount of hours and you waste another eight hours there. And before you know it, you've got like two hours to do something productive with your life and something that you want to do. And then that time is usually just lazy time because you don't want to do anything by then. You see, what's the point? Yeah. I, I, and it's not, I, don't know if you want, I don't know if you want to say it's like time management, but... um. No, that's just how I look at it, I guess. Look at your days and hours. Yeah, think of it as in terms of hours, like, and then then you go there's sixty minutes in an hour. It's a lot of time. Like, there's no reason why you shouldn't be doing all these certain things and getting stuff done because you've got plenty of time. Like, I mean, everything allots for plenty of time for anything to happen. 
I'm trying to think what to write for my uh my comment for my two days I'm requesting off. Uh, I'm having parties. Yeah, she's having guys. parties. Yeah. <laughs> It's gonna be more. It's gonna be better than work. I don't know. I'm hosting some parties. You could probably say. It's, yeah. It sounds more respectful than what I said earlier. I've been having two parties both days. And that's it. Mandy, I'll give them to me. Hopefully. I mean, I don't see why not. Oh my god! Time off request overlaps the New Year's Eve blacked out period from fuck you. What? It says. The, it said, I guess New Year's Eve and Christmas Eve is a blackout period, so you can't request to have off that day. It's just random. You just might get it off. Yeah. I won't work at night, though. It's a Tuesday. Usually I don't work Tuesdays. Huh. And honestly, if that happens and it schedules me, I'll talk to Mandy. I'll try to switch with somebody. But Good I'm luck really getting the switch. It. It's, a, it's a Tuesday, though. Like That's the thing. Like Tuesdays and... Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays, usually I don't work. Every once in a while, I get thrown in on a Tuesday, but not normally. And, like, how this week, even, or next week, Christmas Eve, I work that Tuesday, but I work during the day for, like, a really short kind of, in a way, pointless shift, even. Oh, uh, yeah. So, like, huh. I'm what... not worried about it, really. So, I don't know. I'm not, I don't really care, really. I just want to make sure I'm off for the 30th and I'll still be here for the New Year's one anyway because if even if anything we close early that day and crap so I'm not really worried about it wait you guys would have been open the entire day on New Year's Eve yeah no we would close early but we'd be open still I think we're only open till like 4 yeah, I don't know what time we close but I know we're still open we just close early <sighs> excuse me yawn End of the weekend already, all uh, worn down. Sunday, you know. Yeah, that's a reoccurring thing I've seen for months now. It's just like Sunday nights come or Sundays, and it's just like you get home, and you're just like, oh my god, the week is over. It's already all over. You're just gonna like go to just sit down, think for a little bit, and go to bed, and just be done. Yeah, I know. It's a bummer. That's, it's just like what? That's just what the that's like the Sunday mindset that's that's going on yeah i mean today we went to case to go pick up eileen and we took our christmas picture Uh uh-huh that was a big waste of time (laughs) true what the picture or going to going going to case and the picture just both of them yeah well I mean, stuff you got to do, I guess, right? Yeah, I mean, I guess so. Oh, how you look at it, you know? Hey, you know the you know you know in the basement by the by the door, all those shelves with toys on them and stuff. It's all the crap. Yeah, over there. I guess my mom and dad went through that this weekend. Really? Yeah, everything. Like they're getting rid of like everything. Wow. Like it's all going. <laughs> like, I guess my mom's donated. They're donating it or something, but. That's what I, I guess that's what my dad's doing with the old TV too. He's donating it, but they went through it all. Like they just, I came home yesterday and it was like a, they tore it apart. Like there was nothing left. Like there was just stuff everywhere. Like yeah. I don't know what the heck they went through their mind or what they were thinking. Like that was just like whoa, like yeah, crazy my, in a way. My dad did that a few years ago. He went through the unfinished side of the basement, tore through all those boxes and threw away like the stuff that nobody would notice. There's only one thing I noticed missing, and it was the Nintendo 64. So <laughs> that was a bummer. Yeah, classics. I'm so mad we got rid of the old our old Nintendo 64. Yeah, mom like donated or gave it away or something. I'm so so mad. But you know, just you know, I guess it's what happens. It's life. We can do. We can do about it, man. Guess you can live it, but you know. Mm-hmm. Dude, you know what's so funny? I was talking to David about this. I'm like, you know what? On Sundays, we we eat so much at work that, like, I don't even eat when I go home. We, we eat so much while we're here. Like, on Sundays, it's just, we just eat. You just eat everything? We just, like, eat. It's like, we just eat. Like, I don't even know why. Like, Friday, Saturday, Thursday, it's just more like maybe munch here and there. But Sundays, like, we just, like, eat. 
like today, like for like three hours, we had a we 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 had a plate just full of food the entire time that we were munching at. Like, why? Wh- where do you get? Why do you get like this food? Cause either like it's extra or we're just hungry and we make food and we eat it. Oh, you're allowed to do that? They really don't care. Oh. I mean, like, 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 what we joke about is like, what are they gonna do? They're gonna fire us. I mean, I wish I could say they would, but they can't really afford to fire us, so they're not gonna do that. Oh, okay. And they don't really, they don't say anything new about us either. <laughs> like today, today, um, I forget who asked me. Someone, the other asked me or David. I think it was Jeff. He was like, "What's this?" Like, cause the plate there's just there's like there was a plate of French fries, little chicken bites, chicken fingers that like you couldn't really serve them. That's why we we eat them because you can't serve them. Um, there's like a little plate, French fries, chicken fingers, some onion petals, and then like dipping sauce just sitting there. And Jeff was like, "What's this?" And we were like, "Just munchies, lunchtime." <laughs> Which is like, oh. Then he he ate one and walked away. <laughs> just, like that's literally they. It's not like they know we do it. Like they know we eat the food, but it's like they really don't care because one, we don't eat that much to where we wouldn't. It's not like it makes really that much of a difference in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. And and in like a deep kind of thought, it's like when you think about all the shit we put up with and the stuff we go through, that's the least they could do is let us munch on some food. Yeah. I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like that. That's that's honestly the underlining reason why they don't really flip shit about it. Because, like, especially on a Sunday, with how stupid Sundays get, and how stressful they can get, like, the least thing you can do is let me eat, like, a little pancake. Because I'm hungry. Do you make pancakes? What do you mean? Do, do you make pancakes? To eat? Like, for the customers. Yeah. Oh, you, oh okay. I didn't think and you did eat? that. What do you mean? What do you mean? How, why I wouldn't I do that? I don't know. You're like a grill cook. That's... Yeah, grill cooks make pancakes. Usually when you think of grill cook, you don't think of... Pancakes, you can get like burgers and meat and French fries. Mm, start thinking about French toast, eggs, waffles, all that kind of stuff. Huh. Yeah, we just have like we just have burgers and chicken and French fries and salad. You see, we don't do salad. See, grill cooks don't do salad. Oh, okay. They do. French fries. They wouldn't. We don't touch salad. That's like that's KP and servers to touching salads. Touching salads. <laughs> yeah, they're touching up the salads. You know, you gotta gotta yeah. get in there. Oh my gosh, dude! This, uh, we have like this this frosting stuff. Mm, frosting on top of like a chocolate chip hot ca- chocolate chip pancake or cinnamon pancake. It's like heaven. So good. Cinnamon pancakes. Yeah. So you go. We've like, you don't just we make s- pancakes. You make like extravagant pancakes for yeah, yourself. Yeah, we have. No, we, people can. No, they like they like cinnamon flakes. They're not like it's not like powdered cinnamon. You know, like you'd put yeah. like you have at home. They're like they're like cinnamon flakes. Oh. So it's like it's like the. Be like trying to think like a cinnamon like roll thing, the cinnamon sticks. It'd be like one of those kind of crushed up. Kind like of flakes. Yeah, like flake. Think of like a chocolate chip, right? Yeah. A mini chocolate chip. Yeah. Think of it like rectangle oh, and like it's yeah. cinnamon, okay. just like that. That's all it is. You know, like, dude, we have all kinds of different kinds of pancakes. Like, there's blueberry pancakes. You can get pecans. Pecan uh, pancake. Blueberry. Yeah, they're actually pretty good. Pecan pancakes are pretty damn good. And you have like cranberry whole grain whole grain pancakes, uh, cinnamon chocolate chips. Uh, what else do you put inside a pancake? I think that's it. Cranberries, pecans, chocolate chips, cinnamon flakes. I think yeah, that's I think that's it. Blueberries. I said that. I think we don't do. We have strawberry topping, but we don't put strawberries in the pancakes. I'm surprised we don't. Yeah. So, but I was talking to one of my coworkers the other day. Mm-hmm. And he's been working there for. Uh, let me see. Uh, December, like two. No one. One one year and like ten months, I think. Uh huh. And he says that he still makes minimum wage. Well, why would you still work there? I why don't would know. you find another job? You know what I, I really mean? Don't know. Like I'd either ask for I'd either a ask for a raise or c you don't you never ask for a raise. You ask the manager how they determine their raises. You say yeah. I've been here for this long and I've done this for this long and I worked this hard so. 
I was just wondering, how do you determine your raise? Is it based off of attendance? Is it based off of performance? You know, what's the... And one thing I remember when I, w I asked Mandy about that, when I asked, like, for my raise, kind of, and I thought about that, like, a month after. I'm like, she never answered my question about how they, sh how they determine raises. She just said I'd give you a raise. She never answered my question. <laughs> so, next time I ask for a raise, I'm still leading for that. Yeah, I mean... But I don't think I'm going to have to ask for a raise this time. Better not have to. They, they like, when they were hiring me, they just kind of said, yeah, usually around, like, once or twice a year, we go around and we give the whole, uh, we give the whole restaurant, like, mm -hmm. a raise. Uh-huh. And apparently that hasn't happened in, like, two years. So. Mm hmm I feel like when people play to do that, like, that's not really fair to give the whole restaurant a raise or whatever, or wherever you're working, right? Yeah. Because... It's always evident when people are better than other people and actually know what they're doing, you know, yeah. and are putting out better performance work than other people. So why are you not making more than what they're making? Why would you be making the same as them? Like, that's the, like if, if I were making the same as certain cooks that we have, I'd be pissed. <laughs> like, I feel like that helps me a lot when coming to work and working with some people because I know I make more than them like that. I better be making more than them because they fucking suck. Like, lately, we've been having a lot of new cooks and stuff and a lot of new people. And I swear to God, it's, it's me and David talk about it. And me, Alex, and David talk about it. And it's like, it's, it's we're, when I said, I'm like, it's terrible that we bash these people and complain about them and, and, and do this stuff. But it's like, it, it's, it's bad. It feels bad to say it. But at the end of the day, it's, it's just, it's so true. And the managers even know it's true that some of the people really, really suck. Like, they even know. And it's just terrible. But... That's why do. I make more than them. Yeah. And that's why I don't get thrown underneath the bus anymore. Put my foot down. Is Corey one of the people you bash? No. Corey Corey does dishes. He's in, he's I told you how he did swimming and he doesn't cook he doesn't he still doesn't work that much. Yeah. Does like, he still uh, only work one day a week? Yeah, like two. Two. Still like not even ten hours. Yeah. I don't know. I don't we talked about that and how the whole, I don't know how you could work if you're not getting good shifts and stuff. I can't wait to be 18 just so, you know, of course I'm going to have to, there's no breaks and there's more stuff I have to do. But at the end of the day, it's most likely longer shifts and I can do more. Oh, you won't get breaks still? They won't give me a break. Oh, okay. Yeah, we get like, breaks if we're 18. They should, they should, but they won't because that's the restaurant business. I guess so, yeah. Well, our store is just mayhem, so there's no time for breaks. Like it's it's like a it's like a process to give like the people that need to have breaks a break, especially when it comes to, like grill cooks. Me and David, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a big deal. They're counting down to when we don't have to have breaks anymore. How old is David? David's seventeen. Oh. He turns eighteen in February. I thought I thought he was older. No, David's seven. David's in high school still. A lot of the people that work where I work are still in high school. Like a quarter of the staff are minors. Wow. Uh, I'd say. Um, I'd say about a third of ours are minors. Mhm. Mm and then. It's a... Well, yeah. And then uh, the one the ones that aren't are like. High school or like. Post college. Sitting at Dairy Queen while they're trying to find a job, they claim. Uh huh. So, but they've been there for like five years. Yeah. So it's like, I don't think you're searching. Yeah, like really, you haven't found a job in five years. But, and then like another, like probably another quarter, if not more than half is like college kids. Yeah. Who work while they're in college or work more when they're out of college and stuff. Yeah, we have. And there's a few older people. Yeah, we have a few old people. But they're cool. And most of them are like, I don't know. I don't really know much. Some people work, some of them, a couple of them work like two jobs here and there. Like this is more of just kind of like just an extra kind of money job. Yeah. Kind of thing or whatever. But, and then some of them, most, some of them just work it to work it. Like some of them, you know, they just, just have a job, you know? Yeah. Like why not? I guess. So. And everyone's kind of, everyone's cool. Like, that's not a cool thing. Everyone I work with is cool. Yeah. A lot of these new people that we have, they have no idea what they're doing. And it, it's stupid. Well, are you teaching them? I don't train it. I haven't trained anybody in a long time. Me and David thought I was talking to David about that. I'm like, we haven't really trained anybody in a while. He's like, yeah, we haven't. 
<laughs> like that's probably why everyone's been turning out crappy. If you think about it, the last good cooks we had were the ones we trained. Like the last two solid cooks that kind of came out were the ones that we, we we trained, that I trained. I had a pretty active role in training them, and they are not here anymore. Well, they they left, but they were good. Where'd they go? Uh, Matt quit. He think he got a job at Walmart, and then Nate got another job at some another place. So everyone got a, everyone found another job. They they found a better job than your job. Yeah, it's pretty stressful. It's pretty chaotic. You've you got to be there to inexperience, and then you would you would agree that it's it's stupid. What your job? How yeah. stressful it is. It's not, it's not that it's stressful. It's just it's chaotic. Like how busy it gets, and just like. How people don't know how they're most of it now is like people just don't know how to do their jobs and people are they're slow they don't know what they're doing like they know what they're doing but they're just slow like it's repetitive and it's just it just gets old and tiring yeah I mean that makes sense like the one cook he's just fucking slow as dicks like we literally established this week and last week that when we call him tickets he literally doesn't listen to what we're saying he doesn't even listen he just looks at the ticket once we hang it up so I guess last week Alex was working with him and Alex was calling the ticket and then hanging it up backwards. So like he couldn't look at the ticket. He had to listen to him call the ticket. You- and this guy's been with the he's been he's been working here for at least 5 or 6 months and he's still slow and and just, you know. Yeah. Like we I talk about that with some of like the people that have been, been with the company longer that actually are good and it's like, you know, being a girl cook isn't easy by far. But it's like either you get it or you don't. Either you pick it up, and then after you pick it up, you keep it up. And then after you pick it up, though, then you have to be quick. And if you're not quick and you can't get quick, then you're gone. Like, it doesn't matter if you if you know what you're doing. You have to be quick. Yeah. Speed is the key at this in, in the restaurant business. Like, it's not about even knowing what you're doing. It's about being able to do it quick. Yeah. I, I... And, like, to the one guy... He gets like stressed out when there's a whole bunch of tickets. Like you can just tell he gets stressed out and like he just like quits. He just like stops working. He just like he just kind of like stands there. Like he really doesn't do anything, and it's it's stupid. It pisses you off. Like it's like in a way we've all kind of agreed that some people that some of the people that we work with, we agree that it'd be it would be easier if we were just working by ourselves instead of have someone else helping us doing the other grill. Ouch. Like that's just how much they slow you down, or like that's how much it feels like they're slowing you down. Wow. Because you, like, constantly have to, like, when I still have to work with some of the cooks that have been there longer, and I'm still constantly babysitting them and telling them multiple times what they have to have down or asking them if they have this down or telling them to do this or telling or telling them to do that instead of them just doing it, it pisses you off. Like, I shouldn't have to tell the meat cook when I'm on eggs if they have, like, two turkey dinners to make a turkey dinner if I'm busy. It's their job anyway, but I'll do it to help them out. Or, like, if there's a pot roast to make and I'm busy there's and they're not doing anything, there's no reason why they can't make the pot roast. Like, why, do, you know what I mean? You have an egg station? Yeah, like the, the egg grill and a meat grill. Didn't we talk about this? No. We have an egg grill and a meat grill. Oh, And there's, okay. like, certain things the egg cook, the egg person cooks that the meat cook doesn't. Like, meat person's in charge of your burgers, your fryer items, all your fryer stuff. Okay. Chicken, like grilled chicken breast, bacon, links, yeah, stuff that like oh, meats, like legit meats, but like just pure meats, basically. And then the, your egg cook is in charge of your eggs, like your your omelets, egg. and then like the mixes, pancakes, batter items. Okay, it's so, like breakfast stuff. Yeah, and then like then you have food. pastas, pastas the egg cook does, um, uh, meatloaf's okay. one. Oh, he, um, egg cook does meatloaf. Yeah, well, meatloaf you heat it up in the microwave. Oh, okay. Like this where it's at, and then the thing. Okay. Um, and the egg cook calls the checks to the meat cook, tells the meat cook what he has to put down on the grill. Oh, so is um, egg cook kind of like the the higher position? Yeah, I'd say so. Because you have to know how to call tickets and stuff. Like, meat, meat cook is so easy. I think meat cook is so easy. I love doing meats. It's just so easy. You, the person tells you what to put down, basically, and they basically tell you what to do the whole time. Like, sometimes... When you have a good team and a good meat cook and a good egg cook, the meat cook will actually help the egg cook because that's what you're supposed to do because meats is technically easier than egg, especially like on Saturday, especially in the mornings, right? Yeah. When eggs are getting destroyed, like the meat cook is supposed to help the egg cook. Yeah. Either by 
getting a plate and putting the bacon and home fries on it and saying you need this eggs on here or this is for this omelet or by helping you flip the pancakes if you're doing something else, you know? Yeah. And most people don't do that because the cooks suck. So you're like drowning over there trying to make sure they have everything done on top of what you have to do and it just gets it just gets bad. Wow. That seems pretty stressful. It like I said, it can, it can get it. I don't let it bother me anymore. Like now, instead of like stressing out and trying to like keep to the quick ticket times and try to be good, I just I just let the tickets roll in. I hang them up. I just take my time. I don't. If they don't want to, if the managers don't want to come help us when we're slammed, or if the cooks don't want to kick up their game, I don't have to care either. Because the the thing is too with the cooks that suck, the managers know that I know what I'm doing and that I'm really good. And Mandy knows because I told her that I'm not stressing out over this crap anymore. I'm just gonna go through the motions and do my job. I'm not stressing out over this because they're not doing their job. Like there's no reason for me to get worked up about it because no one else is doing their job. Yeah. Well, like when servers, they've put in their orders too fast and they ring in the wrong food or something. And they're yelling at me because I don't know what to do, even though I made what the ticket said. But it's not what they wanted. Uh-huh. And they expect me to have like like a burger in like a minute. It's like, what do you think this is? You know? Not fast food. This is real food. You wish it was real food. But just like stuff like that. Well, we can have a burger in a minute. Fast food. That's you don't cook. That's you don't like cook it on the grill. You can put well, burgers in the microwave and speed it up. But. We don't. We don't uh, cook our burgers to the order. Yeah, that's what I meant. But. Oh, yeah. Well. Yeah, at our place, uh, one person's on counter, one person's on drive-through. Uh huh. And then usually you'll get a rush in one place, and the other place will be pretty much empty. Yeah. So you just both just you just both go at it and Yeah, you try doom. teamwork kind of thing. Like, usually one person's doing like burgers and like patties and stuff like that, and the other person's uh-huh. doing chicken baskets and all the fries and mm-hmm. those type of things, so it's not too bad. It just all depends. And that's another thing too, like some cooks work really well together, some people don't. Yeah. And then it's a good thing when you have two strong people working together because then they actually help each other. Yeah. Like I shouldn't have to tell someone to do this for me when they could just look at the ticket and know that they can do that because I'm busy. Uh, like, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you're saying. I have no problem making your turkey dinner for you, but if I'm busy and technically that's your job to make the turkey dinner, I'm not going to fucking do it. Why do I have to tell you 10 times to do it or have a bag of turkey in for the turkey dinner? Like, <laughs> it's just irritating. Yeah, I could see it. You know what I mean? Yeah, you guys have a whole, mo- you guys have a lot more food than we do too. We just have burgers, uh, other burgers, uh, chicken finger, chicken like chicken baskets, hot dogs, and then uh, chicken patties. That's it. Uh huh. Like your got. food's not even like to order either, really. No. Yeah. The only thing Some that gets is. stressful is when people order like specialty, like a specialty quesadilla. Yeah, so yeah. Then, mm-hmm. cuz like we have pre-made quesadillas that we were mm-hmm. just we have them in the fridge and we can just like we microwave them, heat them up, and we toss mm-hmm. them on the iron grill, serve them, but then you have to like make it special and uh-huh. It's just it just takes really long. Yeah, it's like the same thing with us. Like honestly, I don't think it's not a problem doing cooking like a lot of the food cuz you know what it is, and you can do it yeah. quick, but then you get the people that say sub this, no this, double this, triple that, no this. Yeah. And then you have some things that it's like this like one of the things like omelets you know yeah like an omelet specifically comes with this stuff and then they want everything that's not in that omelet with stuff that doesn't go on that omelet it's like (laughs) no it doesn't work that way you guys have like oh you guys don't just order omelet and then say what's in it you guys have like ob's omelet or yeah there's like yeah there's like i think we have like five okay there's like a farm there's farm favorite farmer's market uh there's another kind of farm one. I forget what it's called. Garden Harvest, that's what's called. Border, sausage and cheese, ham and cheese, western. And then just like, yeah. Okay. And they all have like said, said things that go in them. Yeah. And then there's Basically. like there's like the times where you're making a burger. And then, you know, because you, you just get in the groove and you just... And then you look up and it's like, no they don't ketchup. Want... And it's like, oh. Yeah, they don't want onions in their omelet after you've already made it and put it in the window. It's like, fuck. Why didn't I notice that earlier? Mm-hmm. Yeah, or they don't want something on their burger. It's... Well, 
you have it so that like you get the finished order sometimes ours will like they'll get this like they'll get they'll order a food item and then they'll switch mm-hmm. to like ice cream stuff and we get it yeah. like through the tv so we'll say like yeah. just a regular kids burger and they'll start ordering a whole bunch of ice cream stuff and it'll go to the other window and you know kids burger takes like you know about 30 seconds to make you do that uh-huh. and then you put it up and then it's like then it disappears and you're like shit and then it comes yeah. back and it's like a grill burger and you're like this is completely pointless so yeah uh-huh. so, i guess one thing that um it's kind of weird that they have in like some of the other restaurants is they have like other by bones restaurants have like computers or whatever yeah like, we have tickets right yeah. we have tickets so they print out of a printer and whatnot. Yeah. And, um... Yeah. Some restaurants, some Bob Bob restaurants, I have computers, you know, computer screens. Yeah, that's So the computers got. automatically, like, even out the tickets and make sure one side's not overwhelmed, right? Oh, yeah. Whereas in ours, if both printers are on, everything on this side of the restaurant goes over here plus carry out, and then everything on this side of the restaurant goes over here. Doesn't matter... If ten tickets come in over here and you get one over there, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's just random, and that's what get that's what can get annoying. Yeah. When one side can get overwhelmed and the other one has like no tickets, or Wait, they give like. So, so do you have like, so do you have two sets of grill cooks working at any time? Um, or? it depends on the business. Like Saturday, Sunday morning, Friday morning, and then like Saturday, Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night. There's two cooks on each side, so four total. Okay. Basically, one on each grill, right? In theory, and like if it's not busy, like on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, usually there's only like two cooks. Yeah. And usually they're on the usually they're on one side, just with the way our store works. Yeah. But then, like through the afternoon and whatnot, sometimes depending on who who you're working with, and if you want to, you can keep both sides open and one cook on each side, or you can cook together. Yeah. It just all depends who you who's there and what you want to do. Like when I work on Thursdays and Fridays. Since the since half the since half the cooks suck that work those nights, I try as long as possible to work alone by myself, so I don't have to put up with them. <laughs> and if I get drowned in tickets, then like that Mandy will come help me or something. Yeah. But I it's easier for me to work by myself alone down there than have to deal with them down there. Yeah. So. So, summing up this whole thing, the restaurant business sucks. I would never get in. Restaurant business is the worst business to go into. Don't. Yeah. It is the most fucked up business. The things people do. Yeah. In restaurants, it's 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 really really bad. But um. So hey, episode twenty one. Twenty one. I I feel like some. It feels like twenty two for some reason. I don't know why. Like I I keep wanting to say it. It's like nope. Yeah. Take that back, Mister. So well, uh yeah. Twenty two. It was fun. We had a good show. That was a good run. Yeah. Kinda, thanks for watching, as usual. Thanks for thanks listening, watching, whatever you you're smoking up. Smoking um up. and what? All right. All right. Gotta catch everyone later. Mike, yeah. anything else to say? Uh, like and favorite, share, Twitter, Facebook, Google Plus, whatever you like. And have a nice day. <laughs>